Welcome to the Campbell Museums. A mundane object like a visiting card case has many stories it can tell. And in this video, I'll explore just one of these stories. Think of this video as the abridged history behind visiting cards. This video is part of our What's in the Box series, where I pull a box from storage and see what we find inside. So check out the box number two playlist for more. While we love our friends and family, for many people, unexpected guests are less than a welcome surprise. So how did people announce they wanted to come over before the telephone? Did they have to write and send a letter to everyone they wanted to visit? No, they had another tool, the visiting card. In fact, visiting cards served many social purposes, such as a means of introduction, to further an acquaintanceship, to express congratulations or condolences, and to provide notices of arrival in a town. Visiting cards were such a necessary tool that one wasn't received as a guest unless a card was sent in advance. Visiting cards seem to have appeared in Western culture around the 16 and 1700s. Titled Europeans used cards made from the leftover pastor board created when playing cards were trimmed. Lore has it that actual playing cards were sometimes inscribed with the name of the noble and sent as an invitation to social gathering. These early visiting cards were often beautifully decorated. Who was it that said, in the Victorian era probably, and a man of course, the only mechanical tool ever needed by a woman is a hairpin? He might have added that with a hairpin and a visiting card, she is ready to meet most emergencies. By the mid-1800s, visiting cards had moved from the titled classes to the ever-growing middle class of the Industrial Revolution. These aspirational members of society seized upon this custom. Why were visiting cards a sign of status, might you ask? To properly follow visiting card etiquette, one needed far more than just calling cards and a lovely case. One also needed to have servants, a home large enough to include a parlor, and a silver card receiver basket. Simply put, this level of social etiquette required money and leisure time. It should be noted that visiting cards and business cards are not interchangeable. While visiting cards were generally only used by the upper middle classes, business cards were widespread among men and women of all classes. A business card left with the servants was in very poor taste, as it could imply that you had called to collect a bill. In our deportment, published in 1890, John Young observes, To the refined or underbred, the visiting card is but a trifling and insignificant bit of social paper. But to the cultured disciple of social law, it conveys a subtle and unmistakable intelligence. Its texture, style of engraving, and even the hour of leaving it to combine to place the stranger, whose name it bears, in a pleasant or a disagreeable attitude, even before his manners, conversation, and face have been able to explain his social position. As you can see, Card etiquette had strict rules. The subtle and covert messages carried through the cards were well understood by those who used them. Successful mastery of this etiquette created an image of respectability in the demanding and judgmental world of the 1800s. I will note the most basic rules around visiting cards. Generally, the sender waited in a carriage and enlisted a servant to deliver the calling card to the house, where it was received by another servant. Once received, the cards from visitors were placed on a silver salver in the entry hall, with the more impressive names displayed on top. The card itself was simple, printed on high-quality unglazed Bristol board with fine script engraving. During the 1800s, Ornamentation was in poor taste. Gentlemen would place their addresses on the cards, but ladies rarely did. 
a married woman would place her married name on the card, such as Mrs. John Smith. A gentleman was to carry his cards loose in a convenient pocket, but a lady could use a card case. Once the card was received, the receiver replied with a response within a week to invite the sender over for an in-person visit. I read several places, but was unable to confirm it through primary source material, that if the sender received the response card sealed in an envelope or simply did not receive a response at all, it meant to maintain social distance. If this is true, this was basically a well-mannered brush off or the Victorian equivalent of being left on red. As society entered into the 20th century, social norms were changing drastically and visiting cards were losing their rigid formality. That said, according to Emily Post in 1922, the queen of 20th century etiquette, the personal card is in a measure an index of one's character, a fantastic or garish note in the type effect, the quality or shape of the card betrays a lack of taste in the owner of the card. By the mid-1900s, perhaps due to the widespread adoption of the telephone, visiting cards Hello? were practically out of use. We no longer judge people based on the look and use of their visiting cards, but what has taken their place as a source of social judgment before one has even met a person? Let us know in the comments below. Mundane objects can contain big stories, and this visiting card case had a lot to say. What other stories might it tell?